Welcome HMD Solutions uh, to this year's competition. It's wonderful to, to have you here. I know you spent a lot of time and preparation and planning and effort in preparing your presentation today. So we're anxious to uh, hear your presentation and be able to ask you questions as well. Uh, before we get started, uh, we're going to introduce the judges uh, briefly and then each of the team members, if you could uh, introduce yourself and then I'll be reading a short uh, introductory comments before we get started. My name is Bill Muren. I'm a retired healthcare executive. I currently serve on, on three boards and I also do community service work. Jeff? Um, hi everyone, my name is Jeff Dace. I am the director of the Institute for Business Ethics and Sustainability here at Loyola Marymount. Really thrilled that you guys are participating in the case competition and really excited to be able to hear your presentation and, and be in dialogue with you. Uh, I am a former healthcare executive and before that a direct marketing executive. Thank you, Jeff. So HMD Solutions, if you could just uh, introduce yourself, maybe we could start with Molly uh, and then go through your team. Sounds good. Um, so my name is Molly Dawson. Of course, um, I am uh, joined by my team members, Danny and Heidi. Um, we are all second year graduate business students. Um, and we're so uh, happy to be here and thank you so much for having us. Welcome. Okay, anyone else wanna introduce you? Is that good enough, Molly, for you? Introduce the other members? Yeah, if Heidi and Danny wanna pop in, they can. Um, if not, that's fine. Works. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm just gonna read the uh, introductory uh, uh, comments here. In this part of the competition, you are taking on a fictional business identity and assigning a fictional business identity to the judges. Please make sure everyone knows who you are and who they are before you begin. And in the executive summary that you provided, that's uh, the judges are the board for LSG Sky Chefs North America. And so we'll, we will act as uh, board members in the presentation. Uh, you'll have 25 minutes to describe the legal, financial, and ethical dimensions of the problem and to recommend a solution that passes muster on all three counts. During this time, teams will be uninterrupted. When you are finished, the judges will ask you questions for about 10 to 15 minutes. And during the Q&A, both you and the judges remain and stay in character. After the Q&A, the judges will have the opportunity to give you some feedback outside of the role playing. And if you have any questions for us, you're free to ask us at that time. So are there any questions before we get started? I have a timer. Uh, once you start, I'll begin the timer and I will give you a two minute warning by putting my hand up like this when we get to two minutes, if we need it. Sounds good? Everybody take a deep breath. Here we go, whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, LSG Sky Chefs North American board members. Thank you for inviting our firm, HMD Solutions, to offer you recommendations on how to diversify your sustainability initiatives and propel you into a sustainable future. We appreciate your time and commend you for being leaders in the aviation catering industry and pushing the sustainability efforts to the forefront of your business model. We have done our due diligence to research and provide solutions and diversify your sustainability initiatives. Just as an overview of the discussion today, we will first introduce our expert team professionals. We will discuss the problem, our proposed solution, ethical, legal, and financial impact. Now, moving forward to introduce our team, my name is Heidi Gardner, and I am the financial consultant of HMD Solutions. I am accompanied with my colleagues, Molly Dawson, our ethical consultant, and finally, Danny Ferrero, our legal consultant. I will, now go, I will now guide us through our executive summary. The objective of our project is how, what new initiatives can LSG Sky Chefs explore, explore to improve their food chain? Our problem sustainable initiatives are centered around packaging. Current sustainable initiatives are centered around packaging and waste management. With increased scarcity, water scarcity on the horizon and global food security at risk, investing in sustainable agriculture isn't just a moral imp imperative, it is also a smart business move. Finally, our solution, audit on suppliers, partnerships with local farmers, startup, vertical, startup costs dealing with vertical farms, and as well as partnering with existing ver vertical farms. I will now pass it off to Molly to discuss in further detail the current environment. Oh, 
All right, and we just wanted to bring you through um, this statement by the LSG group. Um, so the LSG group states, we adopt a holistic view on the topic of corporate responsibility, clustering our activities into the three pillars of sustainability, being people, planet, and prosperity. So looking at the current situation, there are a few aspects we wanna bring your attention to. So starting with environmental, there is of course the major issue of climate change, creating extreme weather events, rising sea levels, et cetera, which is exacerbated by human activities. This also directly is affected by current agricultural trends. Um, some examples of these are over farming causing soil degradation, extreme water use causing droughts, and the abundance of greenhouse gas emissions from production and livestock. Next, we have the social situation. Currently, customers are looking for sustainable alternatives and firms to take corporate responsibility to come up with innovative solutions to be more sustainable. Lastly, we can take a look at the current governmental situation. Currently, the supply chain is facing major issues, as we all know, partly due to rising oil prices, the COVID pandemic, and issues with trade routes and policies. There are also certain regulatory agencies in place that are responsible for food safety and quality, namely the USDA and FDA. I will now go into some of our current CSR efforts. The first is in sustainable packaging. There's been a focus on alternative materials utilizing sugar, corn, and wood fibers to create new products, such as cups and utensils to be used throughout flights. There's also been a focus on dematerialization. This is the use of less plastic, which is specifically um, important for aviation industries as there's been a focus on the balance and weight necessary for fuel consumption in aviation. The second CSR effort that LSG Group is currently focused on is waste management. And this is in the form of alternative management systems utilizing a digital platform in order to cut down on their paper and waste products with the possibility of cutting down on over 100,000 labels that they have printed and utilized each year. Okay. And before we get into our solutions, I want to focus on some of the sustainable development goals that we will be focusing on. The first is Sustainable Development Goal 3, Good Health and Well-Being, to ensure good health and well-being for all ages. As the LSG Sky Chefs produces over 500 million meals each year, it is extremely important the food that we provide to our customers is uh, sustainably sourced and healthy for our customers. The second goal that we'll be focusing on is Goal 12, to ensure sustainable production and consumption patterns. Goal 13, urgent action and to combat climate change and its impact. And last but not least is partnership goal 17, partnerships for the goals. As an internationally known company, LSG Sky Chefs has the opportunity to strengthen the implementation and, util and revitalize current global partnerships, specifically through international and local communities, as well as partnerships with industry professionals and the potential to strengthen current industry standards. Going into some of our solutions. The first is to create an audit with our current practices of our sustainability partners and partnerships to further our sustainability efforts, as well as to partner with farms in key locations in the United States. And I will go further into these locations in a few moments. The second is to create vertical farms in property in key locations in the United States. Connect with vertical farming experts. These are individuals or organizations that currently work work within the area, as well as to establish vertical farms to provide greens for our catering, op for our catering operations. As mentioned, I'm going to focus on a few key locations in the United States. The first is Florida, due to its proximity to key airports. We can find a location in central Florida, we'll be able to connect with local and international airports, such as Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando, and Tampa. It is one of the busiest states for chartered flights, as well as a hub for domestic and international flights into Latin America. We'd also like to find a location in Texas. As mentioned, LSG Sky Chefs is headquartered in Texas at the moment. It is among one of the busiest airports in the United States, Dallas, Fort Worth, as well as to create a location in New Jersey due to its proximity to the New York airports and Newark. It is one of the states with the leading airports for chartered air flights in 2020.
Alrighty, so within the industry, there are certain potential ethical issues. Firstly is the social aspect of issues um, within communities. Local communities surrounding the farms at the beginning of the supply chain are vulnerable to how the farms are performing as that is a livelihood that supports their families and the local economy. They have certain consumption and waste rates that have to be monitored to not get too out of control. And secondly, LSG themselves have an opportunity to address these potential issues by partnering with local organizations to support these communities that they are using for their production. They also have a responsibility to be transparent of these environmental practices to avoid greenwashing or the practice of using buzzwords or false advertising to communicate sustainability without backing up these claims with their practices. A third and final aspect of the social impact of these ethical issues is the regulatory agencies and legal bodies that control certain aspects of these operations. Within the support of these agencies, without the support of these agencies to allow these changes to happen swiftly and effectively, not much can be done and the production lacks with no change being able to be made. Due to this, LSG must work closely with these agencies, such as the USDA and US Customs, to remain transparent with their operation and changes that they wish to be made, ensuring everything will be done legally and ethically. Secondly, looking at the farm to tray aspect of the food, there is an issue with the process involving the intermediaries. As produce and money changes hands throughout the intermediaries from the farms to the final customer, cost is slowly increased and eventually leaves little profit left for the farmer to use to provide for their families. By involving these intermediaries, it, inc it increases the potential for unfair labor practices and inadequate pay for their work. Lastly, there is a large difference between the large scale commercial farms and smaller scale family run farms. Although these large scale operations are necessary for sheer quantity at times, they do require large amounts of water and energy specifically. According to the EIA, the US agriculture industry used nearly 800 trillion British thermal units or BTUs of energy in 2012, or about as much primary energy as the entire state of Utah. This puts more pressure on the energy infrastructure and fossil fuel industry, in turn putting more stress on the environment. There is also the issue of using up our natural resources, especially water. According to the USDA, agriculture is a major user of ground and surface water in the United States, and irrigation accounted for 42% of the nation's total fresh water withdrawals in 2015. Relying on these large-scale practices puts immense pressure on the environment and on the local communities that are quickly running out of fresh water and arable soil. I will now go into some of the legal issues that occur with our issue. The first is an aviation safety. In the United States, the main regulator for aviation safety is the Federal Aviation Administration. On an international level, standards are set by the International Flight Services Association. And specifically, we want to focus on food safety laws as we're within the catering business. So food safety laws within aviation are established by the IF. C, uh, SA. The first is based on the HACCP, the Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points. This was established by a partnership between NASA and the Pillsbury Corporation early in the 60s to regulate food safety um, in NASA's current flights, but it is extremely important when we think about aviation because it's based on some of the ways that we store food and how we can protect it and um, focuses on any potential hazards points. It's also based on good manufacturing practices. Slide. Back on slide. Okay. So as we mentioned, no worries. Um, so as we mentioned, we would like to set up vertical farms in key locations in the United States. And the first thing that we need to consider when rolling this out into practice is local zoning, zoning ordinances. It's important to identify both cities and counties that already support alternative agricultural programs. These are such as indoor crop production and aquaponics. We have to look at the zoning ordinances that specifically define these. It is entirely possible to make a location um, in areas that don't specifically define them. However, it can be extremely costly and time consuming when approaching the city and the council 
to change zoning and building ordinances. So this has worked previously in locations that we are looking at, specifically within Austin, Texas, which already defines indoor crop production, which allows for the protection of crops as well as the packaging within the city limits. In Orlando, Florida, they've recently opened up a new vertical farming organization in collaboration with the Marriott International Hotels. This allows for them to create product to um, create green and crops to be utilized within their restaurants. And the third is in Newark, New Jersey. We've already there's already been an established vertical farming operation close to the Newark Airport in partnership with Singapore Airlines, creating crops to be used in their long haul international flights. So not only is this possible. It's extremely possible for us to continue to look into this um, as a possibility for LSG Sky Chefs. And now I'll pass it on to Heidi to talk about the financial impacts. Perfect. Thank you, Danny. So within this section, I will discuss the financial, financial issues pertaining to our solution. I will discuss the financial costs associated with auditing, potential partnership with farmers, vertical farm costs, potential partnerships with vertical farms. So just a little bit, just to get, a, just to really just hone in on the issue and how much food LSG Sky Chefs has to provide worldwide as well as internally in North America, LSG Sky Chefs provides 591 meals per year for over 300 airlines at 211 airports in 140 locations. Next slide, sorry. <laughs> this is a little bit of a lag on my side, my apologies. Um, so with our proposed solution steps, our first step here is the auditing current suppliers. So with auditing our current suppliers, our goals will have to be reestablished, working with chefs as well as suppliers to ensure new standards are met for our, for our suppliers that target improving um, sustainable business practices. Our second, um, our second, step here is partnerships with local farmers. So partnering with local farmers in Texas, New Jersey, and Florida that already have the resources and reputation of fulfilling a sustainable business practices that lines up with our sustainable goals. The third is our vertical farm costs. In this part, I will discuss the costs associated with starting up a vertical farm. And finally, I will discuss the financial impacts of a vertical farm partnerships, working with other partners with knowledge and expertise that can significantly decrease the turnaround time to start this initiative and allow LSG to lower costs and also accelerate the time um, the products to the market. So moving to the next slide here, we have our, our auditing. So the audit provided by the USDA examines the, US, the, the USDA examines the economy and the efficiency of USDA programs and in operations, including program results, compliance with applicable laws and regulations, and accuracy of financial reports. The GAP certification is a voluntarily certification program which verifies through an audit conducted by the USDA the sound of food practices being used. An important item on the audit that we want to highlight is the source of incoming product that and the destination of the outgoing product is traceable. And as we can see here on the graph, it is $150 per hour plus a service fee of $50, the US, USDA service fee. Finally, the second aspect of this is the internal audit, where the current employees will, will be also be able to go with their, ex, with their um, expertise, travel to the farms and ensure that they are abiding by the regulations and the new compliance methods that we want our, our suppliers to have. So the costs associated with that would be pending travel expenses. And now moving on to the second slide, we have partnerships with local sustainable farms. Similarly, in the restaurant market, there is a farm to table. We want to include farm to tray by partnering with local, part, with partnering with local and sustainable farms. The cost of creating this partnership will vary on the sustainable business purchasing policies and purchasing specifications that are inclusive of local producers and committing to and budgeting for local and sustainable purchases. Moving to the next slide, I will now discuss a high level overview cost associated with starting a vertical farm. Factors to note are the size, the location, the available energy source, final design, labor, and finally equipment. 
The vertical farming market size was valued at $3.24 billion in 2020 and is projected to reach $24.11 billion by 2030, registering a compound annual growth rate of 22.9%. Now, I will now discuss just a, a high-level overview once again of what of a, of a potential location and the costs associated with that. So for example, here we have the estimated size of the facility, a warehouse style facility would be 20,000 square feet, which would be half the size of the American football, of, which would be half the size of an American football field. The energy costs, the upfront costs being 90 to $500,000 to secure the property. And the energy cost being $8.02 square feet on an annual basis for energy expenses. The energy expenses are dependent on the efficiency of the bulbs. As vert with vertical farming, the, the, efficient, the bulbs are running 24 hours of the day. And then finally, our next cost would be $20.78 square feet um, of labor costs, which would include salary and benefits for you on an average. So finally, with our potential partnerships, um, leading with all these three different aspects that are parts of our solution, we also wanted to touch on potential partnerships with organizations that are already in the industry of vertical farming, but also can provide us an option to have our own facility, but they would be the ones to set it up. So for example, we have Aero Farms. As Danny mentioned, they are already partnered up with Singapore Airlines. So they already have the reputation of being within the industry and understanding the, the regulations and the, the demand within the industry. They also, Aero Farms is a sustainable indoor agricultural company that uses patented system to grow produce, currently owns and operates four farming facilities in and around Newark. They offer baby bok choy, new spinach, micro arugula, and many more leafy greens. Green Eden Technology, the company that develops, is a company that develops and manufactures hydroponic vertical growing systems for commercial food crops and research and development greenhouses. They are headquartered in Cleburne, Texas. They offer a turnkey greenhouse system and vertical farming technology, giving LSG the ability to grow locally and harvest large amounts of produce safely, efficiently scale their efforts while using exponentially less land, energy, and water than traditional farming. I will now demonstrate why LSG Sky Catering must take, in, take action in exploring initiatives to, ex, to enhance their food chain. Oh, my apologies. Now let's first discuss the financial impact and what is currently within what happened within the past two years. So within 2020, LSG uh, prop had a net loss of 379 million, but they were able to bounce back um, in 2021, getting 29 million, profiting $29 million. And I would like to quote from a, a source uh, that we read, on our research is that business travelers are itching to get back to the sky with remote work being a possible solution for workations. So the demand is increasing and promising bounce back from 2020. So the opportunity here for LSG in the fi financially speaking, there are government agencies that have, there are government agencies that have added a significant amount of, in of investment into the agricultural space. For example, in 2021, the USDA announced that more than 146 million investments in sustainable, in, in projects that are sustainable, that are aimed at improving robust, resilient, climate smart food agricultural system. The Biden Harris administration is wanting to transform America's food system with greater focus on more resilient local and regional pr food production. This leads to my next point agricultural trends. To feed a growing population, estimated, estimate, estimates suggest that we will have to increase food production by as much as 68% by 2050. To stay ahead of increased re government regulations, LSG should invest in creating a more diverse supply chain. The effects of COVID-19 demonstrated the sensitivity of our supply chain. As the leading aviation catering service for 300 airlines, LSG must remain proactive to find solutions that allow the company to remain flexible, to cope with unexpected events that can, that can create bottlenecks in the chain that can jeopardize the longevity of LSG Sky Chefs. And moving on to my final point, the customer demands. Global retail sales of plant-based 
alternatives were just under $30 billion in 2020, according to an report in the Bloomberg Intelligence. The market could reach sales of 100, can reach sales up to $162 billion by 2030. Consumers are holding business practice, businesses accountable to governance standards and are choosing to vote with their wallets. LSG must remain adaptable and able to provide plant-based options as consumers and airline, as consumers are and airlines must work together to stay on top of current trends. And now Molly will discuss a little bit of overall of our project. All right, thank you, Heidi. So why should LSG Sky Chefs invest in our solution? Firstly, LSG is currently at the forefront of sustainability efforts within their products and services as is, and this would be a way for them to remain at the forefront by diversifying their current efforts. These solutions would also provide the opportunity to innovate within the industry and start a trend, putting LSG as the leader. As society continues to change and grow, adaptation is more important than ever. LSG is currently in a position to take charge and create a ripple, a, a ripple effect of change within the catering and aviation industry to advance global sustainability and our solutions provide a vehicle for this. And therefore, that is why we feel that they should invest in our solution. With that, we thank you and we welcome any questions. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, as a senior judge, I'll ask the first couple of questions. Um, first question is just to, to help me understand a little bit. The, were you engaged by the board or were you engaged by management to make this recommendation to us? So we were mainly engaged by the board um, since we we know that LSG currently has multiple sustainability efforts, um, whether it's through their packaging um, or through their food waste. Um, so we just wanted to give the opportunity and provide our feedback on how they can di diversify that more into their aviation industry specifically. Great, thanks. You know, when you go back to the uh, ethical issues that you identified, um, the social aspect, the farm to tray and the family uh, farms versus. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that, on how those are, are drivers? Where's that, where's that coming from? How are those identified? Like the, the intermediaries? Well, each one of those uh, ethical issues, social aspect, farm to tray, family run versus industry. How did you determine those? How, could you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, so we did some research into what is currently um, the biggest trends and the issues that especially the farming industry is seeing. Um, we focused mainly on that. Um, with the ethical issues, it wasn't so much within the aviation industry, but within farming um, themselves. Um, so that's where we got these um, ideas from and ones that we wanted to touch on within our solutions. Okay. And the ethical issues then translated into the recommendations that you came up with. If, if you took these, uh, I know early on you had the, I believe it was the mission statement. Uh, these directly link back to the mission statement as a board member, can I go back and look at that and then translate right to here, here and see a flow? Yeah, I believe so, absolutely. Um, of course, in the mission statement, um, you guys mentioned the three pillars of sustainability being people, planet, and prosperity. I mean, I feel like this really goes along with that. Um, on one side, the ethical social issues really connect to people. Of course, protecting the environment and our resources aligns with planet. Um, and then prosperity for those communities um, kind of fits into all three. Great, thanks. Jeff? So, um, I, I, Heidi, I think you had given this part of the presentation, but I could you please explain again the volume that each of these facilities would need to um, make on a daily basis? I thought I heard 591 meals or something like that, but I wasn't sure that that was, I wasn't sure about that. Yeah, so worldwide, they, LSG does offer, um, does provide 591 million um, meals. Our initiative is starting to 
uh, of course, it would have to be scaled back and, uh, and, and tested. So we, the way how we would, would, would like to implement this would be to start in New Jersey or tech or in Texas or in Florida, a small base and make the and test, uh, test it out in those locations first before it is brought on to the different, brought across the whole supply chain. So, uh, so thank you. So related to that then, uh, the, the um, square footage volume and the kind of the process of the urban farming um, that you talked about, the vertical farming, excuse me, that is sufficient to the individual location volume. Let's take Dallas Fort Worth as one example. Yes, it is. And we've seen within our research, for example, with, with Aero Farms working with, um, working with Singapore Airlines, that they're able to meet their demand. And we're hoping with this initiative that we will obviously continue to do more and more research, but we will be able to as well um, follow, follow, the same, follow the same suit. Thank you. On the uh, vertical farming that you were talking about and the investment on that, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe I, I just didn't see it. Uh, what type of return would we get back on that investment? It's not a huge investment, but what is the return? You know, we're just we're just back in the in the uh, profit at this point from a huge loss uh, a year ago, and we came back last year. Now, you know, we're holding our own. But this investment, I mean, what what do you see potentially in terms of the return to the organization, in terms of of uh, you know, volume or market share or anything like that? Yes, as consumers, as consumer demands continue to um, be increased by, as consumers continue to vote with their wallets, it's important for LSG to remain on, on top of the trends, as I mentioned in my last slide. So the plant-based options, consumers are looking for more and more plant-based options on their flights. Um, and they're expecting airlines to, to remain on trends. And as we are the caterers for over 300 airlines, it is important for us to be, um, to be in the forefront and understanding what our consumers, what our end consumer wants. But also, as I mentioned earlier, the water scarcity and as well as a lot of in our research, we noticed um, that there will be over, that more and more people will continue to move to urban cities. So with that being said, some of the, the farming locations that we will have access to will be depleted. So it's just important for us to remain innovative and not um, taking a step back and being re reactive, but more so being proactive in our solution. That's why um, it's within our suggestion to first start off with a location in either New Jersey, in Dallas, and or in Florida, and then scale it from there. Do you, do you see any type of uh, harm to our current suppliers if we transition to what you're suggesting? Right, and as I mentioned, yeah. no, perfect. I, I, I appreciate that question. That's a great question. Um, but what I think the most important aspect is for us is to have that audit with our, our suppliers. That will be the first step in really understanding and letting them see exactly what our new guidelines would be for them. And if they are not able to provide or not conform to our, a recommendation or our new requirements, but also, but not to conform, but to move forward and allow them as well, because it only help benefit them to be more sustainable in their efforts in the long time as well. So our just main initiative is really just focusing on our, our current suppliers, but also providing four different or providing three different other options if the, our certain our, our suppliers are not able to provide are not able to transition into the new specs that we want them to. Um, for our, our food. What, what, what are you hearing from our clients, the airlines? Are they? Yes. And the airline industry understands the trends of, of consumer, understands the consumer behavior, and they are seeing a more, uh, they, 
our airlines want more food that's diversifiable because with if you for example have just meat you're only allowed to make chicken or, or for example with chicken you're only you're limited to your options of of, of using that food, produce but if you have more and more leafy greens and that's where our consumers are expecting as well and they're relaying that information to our airlines that they're expecting more and more plant-based option foods because those and as well as it's it's a benefit for us as LSG Sky Catering because we are able to now have more and more our food options our our produce is able to be used in many more different um ways as well as meeting our consumer demand and also being at the forefront being leaders that we are in the industry and, and when you looked at this, did you, you know, right now the airline industry, our clients are, that industry is really driven by price. And, you know, there are issues now that we're looking at where you're suggesting consumers are asking for something that may e either balance that out or actually, you know, increase market share if we're ser serving food that is uh, produced in the way that you're describing. Do you have anything to substantiate that, that, that in your research that would show that, that by making this investment, you know, we're actually uh, ad addressing some long-term issues for us? Yes. And in the, as you mentioned earlier, price is a, is a very, is very sensitive in the airline industry, but more so our, our sustainable efforts are the LSG overall sky carrier is to be more with the people uh, to be, I'm so sorry, hang on one second. My computer is going to die and I did not know this, but I'm just gonna quickly answer this question. I'm sorry, my apologies. But leaning more, answering your question, the, air, the airline industry is expected to con not conform to providing better meals, but they are expected to. These are from from top down. Um, our the airlines have requested this, and they are going to continue to request this because, as I mentioned earlier, our consumers, our end consumers, the people, the our airline travelers, are requesting this. So, with we have to in order for us to be better, better in better place now. It's sort of like not to be cliche, but planting a seed now for us to reap the sow later. That's that's our initiative and, and just hoping that LSG will be able to move to be more diversifiable in their sustainability efforts. Will, will this have any impact on our employees who now work in the, you know, with the suppliers and, you know, we have a, a large, you know, group devoted to this, would that, this impact them because we have a different supply chain approach? Yes. It, it won't, it will not, it will not change much of the system. It will not change much. The only real issue at, at the beginning would be sending out some of our employees to go and, and conduct those audits. But on an overall basis, the whole objective of this is for us to, to be proactive in our search. We, as we saw with COVID-19, the supply chain is very sensitive. So just really just diversifying our options and just explaining to our employees and just understanding that they're at the forefront and getting them on board will allow us to reap more benefits later. Great. Thank you. Jeff? Um, so just uh, so we want to be industry leaders, both in our innovation and also in our commitment to sustainability. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Sorry. OK, no worries. Um, so I'm thinking about this proposal, and we know that the deeper impact to environmental degradation as it relates to food really comes from meat more than plants. Um, beef, of course, more than chicken, but don't you think that ultimately, or maybe even soon, the logic that you're sharing with us leads us to need to commit to be a plant-based and non-meat food provider. Um, and I wonder if you could speak to that and if you think that that is a direction that we should go, again, based on this commitment and our commitment to, be, to leadership in this regard or and how you would engage that question. Yeah, so of course I do agree um, that you know the livestock aspect and the meat aspect is really what is driving a lot of um, this environmental degradation with greenhouse gas emissions. 
um, and overgrazing and, and issues like that. Um, that being said, I think the reason that we focused more on produce um, is simply because it's a, a stepping off point. Um, it's something that's more, there's more options out there available, such as vertical farming, um, current smaller farms that are already present in those strategic areas like Danny and Heidi went over. Um, so there's no, you know, there's nothing to say that um, we couldn't eventually move on to um, looking at our supply chain for our meats and our poultry. Um, but I think at this point, the reason that we went um, and focused more on produce was just to use it as a stepping off point. Um, as there's currently the most innovation in that field um, and just kind of wait for the market to kind of catch up with us um, to kind of tackle the meat side of that as well later down the road. Thank and you. Also, um, oh, I'm sorry, just to add on a little bit um, to, to Molly's point, it's, a, it's we are able to differ, differentiate ourselves in the market as well, um, keeping up with these trends and, and, and offering these, offering more, more of these plant-based options as, as, as Molly mentioned. Do we uh, need to uh, examine and what would be your thinking about our need to examine our supply chain for current suppliers related to their commitments to regenerative agriculture? I think it absolutely is something that um, we need to look into, especially how Heidi talked about the auditing system that we're proposing. Um, I think it's very important to see, you know, of course, um, every business has their own supply chain, um, and it's very important to know where your products are coming from and how they're changing hands um, and making sure that everyone along that line is being taken care of. So I think it's incredibly important to look at all aspects of the supply chain. Um, obviously, for this example, we're looking specifically at our produce, um, but I think it's super important to make sure that, um, you know, you're not just buying products from the end at the end from your suppliers, but instead are looking at a more well-rounded approach um, and understanding where everything is coming from and the role that you might be playing in those practices throughout the supply chain. Thank you. I have just one other question. Uh, you, uh, there's a lot of upside in your uh, proposal. Um, you know, from, from our standpoint at, at the board, is there any downside that we need to consider any risk or downside if we pursue the strategy that you're articulating today. Yeah, I think I think the biggest downside would be, of course, there are costs to these alternatives, um, especially with the vertical farming. It is a pretty large investment um, to get started. So I would see that as the biggest downside um, is just doing that investment. Of course, um, like we've all addressed um, and you guys brought up your concern for the fact that the aviation industry is just starting to kind of get out of the hole um, after the COVID pandemic. Um, so I would say that's the biggest downside is just the fact that, you know, if, if we wanna make these changes, um, it will require capital to begin with um, and a large investment to begin with. But um, our hope is that it will in the long run end up being a worthy investment and the ROI will um, gladly surpass that. Okay, thank you. Jeff, any other questions? No, I'm good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we'll now transition away from the presentation uh, to an opportunity for us to give you some feedback outside of our role as board members uh, and have you ask us any questions if you'd like to, but congratulations. I mean, uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, and I know time and effort you put into this was substantial. So, uh, so thank you. Jeff, do you have any comments you'd like to offer to the group? Yeah, so again, uh, congratulations, really good job. Um, your uh, graphics and the way in which you walked through the information and developed your proposal, uh, anchoring that uh, the, you know, the company mission and real commitment to innovation in the sustainability space, is very uh, was very compelling and very interesting. Um, the um, I, I did the, the question that I had about the, the the scope and scale of what their current volume was. Uh, as you look at it, that would be something that you would want to spell out a little bit more. I had a hard time kind of following that because the urban farm or the vertical farm landscape against the volume. It, I was trying to kind of square that circle, so that was a little bit of a of a concern. Um, 
at the Institute for Business Ethics and Sustainability, we have a sustainability business advisory uh, council. And one of them is the owner of LA Urban Farms, which is a vertical farming uh, company. And I'm disappointed that uh, she was a judge, the owner is a judge earlier in one of an earlier presentation. She would have been thrilled to be with you guys this afternoon. Um, and I'm disappointed for her that she wasn't here because uh, when you were talking about vertical farming in Marriott, that's one of their accounts. So anyway, um, she would have been really excited about that. Um, the, um, I think the, the other piece is that you're touching on really important topics. Um, the, the, the challenge in sustainability in industrial agriculture, and that really fundamentally is the, your company's supply chain. And you're just starting to scratch through one real discrete proposal, some really bigger topics. And those are very important topics. And it's, it's great that you recognize those. You could have maybe had a slide that would have acknowledged that because some of the questions kind of by definition go in those directions, but um, really well done. Finally, uh, throwing out a lot of compliments. Great job handling the questions because we were throwing a lot of stuff at you. And, um, and part of your preparation is trying to imagine what we might come up with and how do you handle that? And you were very deft and professional in how you engaged each of those, really impressive. I uh, echo uh, everything that uh, Jeff shared with you uh, and tell you how impressed I am. Uh, and, the, and the questions and the way we're asking them, you know, is to, is to prepare you. Because as you finish your, your uh, master's programs and go off in, into jobs, uh, you may very well be presenting very shortly into to boards and to other executive teams where the questions are going to be peppered, you know, and you got to, you got to be responded. And as Jeff said, you did a great job uh, at doing that. Uh, just a, just a, a couple of comments. Uh, and it's really just as you move forward in your, your, your careers. Uh, it's important when you present, particularly to a board, you start out saying, you know, who you are and who you're representing. Uh, because as a board, if we're the audience of the board, we don't know what, what management is, is involved in this, or if we hired you to give us a review because we've got some issues with management or we want something to just, so just say, we were engaged by you to do this. And that kind of sets the framework uh, for us to be able to do it. And in your presentation, be careful of your handoffs, make sure you're handing off in, in a way that somebody picks up on the next slide and you're able, able to, to do that uh, effectively. But, uh, uh, you know, other than that, you know, you guys are, uh, uh, I shouldn't say you guys, you uh, consultants are very uh, adept and you did a very good job. A lot of information you presented in a short period of time. And I know a short period of time is, is difficult, but in many cases, that's all the time you get when you're in front of a board and you got to kind of get your, get your point, say what you want, say what the recommendations are, and then uh, hold on as the questions start coming. But you guys did a great job and uh, we're, Wishing you the very best as the competition continues. Uh, so do you have any questions for us? Anything that we could answer for you? Um, yes, I do have a question moving forward. Um, with some of the, the financial aspects, do you felt, did you feel when I was speaking on the financial aspects that they covered enough of the information? Because I felt that the financial aspect of the, the actual guidelines, I felt they were a little like very high level. So that's where I sort of tried to keep it. So I just wanna just ask on that question specifically. Yeah, I, I think anytime you're presenting uh, the financial part is you, you, want, you want to make sure you have the business case pretty well nailed down from a financial standpoint. You know, what's the investment? Okay, what's the return? And what what is the the other benefits outside of the financial? So you know, look, if we're going to invest 3 million, you know, we're going to get a return on this of uh, three to one on that. In addition to that, we're increasing our market share and improving our customer relations, whatever that might be. That's always helpful. It doesn't have to be long because you're dealing with a board. If you were with a different audience, an executive team, you'd have to have much more detail. But with a board, you want to give them, you know, the, the points that they're looking for. Investment, return, stability. I mean, what, 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 what are we getting for the money, because we've got the, 
fiduciary responsibility to ensure the organization is operating that way to the shareholders. And we've got a responsibility. So, you know, Jeff. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's as it relates to the financial, that's part of what I was thinking about. Um, you, what wasn't clear is um, what the return was on that investment. And the answers tended to be um, less precise than the precision that you had in what the cost would be. So we really would want to, the, the question a board member would ask is, you know, can we afford this and what's the uh, timeline for the ROI? And, and if they don't hear that, then they, they're spinning that in their own mind. And when that happens, they, they're not listening to you anymore because they're trying to figure out that piece and then you lose your audience. So the more you can be precise in the ways that Bill mentioned would be really helpful. Um, the, uh, the ethical piece also just one, one piece of feedback as you prepare for tomorrow, because that's the portion that you're going to be focusing on. Um, you um, have content really about the categories of ethical concern. And also, I think there's an opportunity to state what you believe our ethical responsibility is, and also our the opportunity for us to be um, to be advancing our mission and what the core values are of the organization. And um, so, just as you as you prepare for tomorrow, the the ninety second with its focus on sustainability, a lot of your presentation really was in the sustainability benefits of your proposal. On the ethical piece, which is the 10 minute presentation tomorrow, you really want to make sure that you bring those ethical dimensions forward. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Jeff.